is that the cause i'll be looking at industrial preparation of oxygen in the previous video we look at the laboratory preparation of oxygen through the catalytic decomposition of potassium trisochlorate 5 and through the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide all right in this video we'll be looking at how we can manufacture oxygen on a large scale in the industries and there are two processes that we can use number one we can produce oxygen industrially from liquefied air by fractional distillation all those oxygen used in the hospital to prevent a patient from dying too quickly or to save a life of almost dead patient they are manufactured by this process commercial preparation of oxygen either from liquefied air by fractional distillation or by electrolysis of acidulated water so when you want to produce or manufacture oxygen industrially from liquefied air two processes are always involved number one you liquefy the air first after getting rid of all impurities inside you remove oxygen uh, sorry you remove dust you remove water vapor you remove carbon dioxide from the air you will be left with nitrogen and oxygen and probably with the trace of some noble gases so after you liquefy this air then you'll be left with doing fractional distillation of that liquid air all right so first and foremost remove impurities secondly liquefy the air how do we liquefy the air you do this through a series of expansion and compression of air at low temperature of minus 200 degrees celsius so if you put the oxid the liquefied air or if you put the purified air into this tube when it enters this place the temperature is very hot here and the pressure will be high the higher the temperature the higher the pressure so the temperature here will make the pressure of the air to be very high so here we have in high pressure then you pass it into a cold compressor so suddenly it's going to become compressed after being expanded uh, become expanded after being compressed at high temperature so at the temp at the temperature of minus 200 degrees celsius as you bring down the temperature to very low temperature of minus 200 degrees celsius the air will suddenly liquefy and turn to a liquid so that's how you liquefy the air so from year to year now we are performing the liquefaction of purified air so once you have purified the air you perform a fractional distillation of that liquefied air so when you put the liquefied air into a fractionating column nitrogen is having a lower boiling point remember that fractional distillation makes use of boiling point so nitrogen has a lower boiling point of minus 196 degrees celsius so that temperature is lower than the boiling point of oxygen which is minus 183 so nitrogen is nitrogen is minus 196 lower than oxygen which is a minus 183 so when you are starting from minus 200 and you are increasing the temperature you get to minus 199 you get to minus 198 to minus, to minus to minus 197 the nitrogen will start boiling then the minus 196 it will boiling out rapidly leaving behind oxygen whose boiling point is still higher than minus 196 so oxygen will remain under the fragmented column as a liquid because at the temperature that we are only nitrogen is boiling at that point so you collect nitrogen gas out from the top of the tower and you are left with oxygen gas uh, oxygen liquid at the bottom of that tower so all i've been saying since is that first and foremost you purify the air by removing carbon dioxide using caustic soda 
the move water vapor using conk H2SO for any other drying agent. Then you remove dust by passing the air into an electric arc. It removes all these, all the impurities. Next, the air that we have purified now. Remember that when you purify air, you are only left with nitrogen, oxygen, and maybe some traces of noble gases. That is the component of a purified air. So once you have purified the air, then you liquefy it at high, temp at high pressure and low temperature. Air will become liquid. Gases become liquefied at low temperature and high pressure. So once you have done that, then you perform a fractional distillation of the liquefied air at minus 200 degrees Celsius. Air will turn to liquid. Then when you fractionate it at minus 196 degrees Celsius, nitrogen will boil out, leaving behind a liquid that is rich in oxygen, as you can see at the right hand side of this particular screen. The next method you can use to manufacture oxygen industrially mm -hmm. is by the electrolysis of acidified water. You perform water electrolysis in an instrument that is called Hoffman voltameter. You can see this is Hoffman voltameter. Hoffman voltameter. It has two arms and a middle tube. That middle tube you put oxygen inside. Uh, you put uh, water inside that contains drops of conk H2SO4. So that's what we call acidified water. Water that contains H2SO4 inside. The H2SO4 inside is present there to increase the conductivity of the water. So, what's, uh, so what happens is that at the cathode, hydrogen gas is liberated. Cathode is the positive, uh, is the negative pole. This is the cathode, the negative pole of the electrode. You will do that later under electrolysis. And then the anode is the positive pole. So oxygen comes out at the anode, as you can see here. Hydrogen comes out at the cathode, as you can see here. So when you are electrolyzing water, you are producing both hydrogen and oxygen at the same time using the Hoffman voltameter. In summary, all we have said is that your air, you purify it and you compress it. So those two step stages take care of purification and compression. When you compress it, it turns to liquid. Then the third stage, you perform a fractional distillation of that purified, liquefied air. Then the air will be separated into liquid, oxygen, and nitrogen gas. And that's how you get your oxygen by that method industrially. So the other method is by electrolysis of acidified water. And this is how you produce oxygen industrially. God bless you.